Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, we'll be doing quick check problems. I'm on page 229 of your course pack. All right, so what I want you to do is to pause the lecture video and do these quick check problems on page 229 and do number 67 at the, pot, at the top of page 230 and then uh, pause, pause the lecture video and do those. Then we'll review them and then we'll do, um, actually we'll do, I take that back. Just do these first three and then we'll do numbers 67 and 69 together. So just do these first three and then we'll come back and check them, okay? Thanks. Okay, hello and welcome back. So when we look at these, depreciation is higher and income is lower. Yes, depreciation is an expense on the income statement. So as depreciation expense goes up, income goes down. So income is lower in the short run when using accelerated, such as double declining, versus straight line. Yes, that's true. If a machine is damaged during unpacking, the repairs are added to the cost that goes up onto the balance sheet. No. Remember, those would be expense because that's not normal and reasonable. We would not expect that the machine would be damaged. If we expect that, we need to go to a different supplier. Okay. Land is not subject to depreciation because it has an unlimited life. This first sentence is true. But then the second sentence is false. This means that items which increase the usefulness of land, such as parking lots, are not depreciated. No, land improvements are depreciated. Land is not. Okay. So let's look at number 67 and number 69. Okay. So we look at number 67 right over here. When originally purchased, a vehicle had an estimated useful life of eight years. Okay. The vehicle cost $23,000 and its estimated salvage value is $1,500. All right. So this is the all the initial. After four years of straight line depreciation, the asset's total estimated useful life was changed from eight down to six. So they reduced it by two years. And there was no change in the salvage value. Calculate depreciation expense at year five. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So we come over here. The first thing that we have to do is figure out accumulated depreciation. Because what this is, this problem is a revision in our estimates, right? Because we're changing, we're changing our estimated useful life. So we have to treat it as such. So that what that means is we have to figure out our book value and then take the book value minus the salvage value divided by the remaining useful life. So we have to calculate the book value, take the book value minus the salvage value divided by the remaining useful life. And that's the way we figure out depreciation expense. Okay. So what we can say is accumulated depreciation at end of year four. Well, what we do is we can take our 23,000, right? Our asset cost minus our salvage value divided by eight. This is all the initial, right? That's our initial depreciation. And then what I can do is multiply it times four. That will give me accumulated depreciation. And what that's equal to is our 10,750. And you can see that's one of the answers, right? That's not the answer. That is accumulated depreciation at the end of four years. Okay. So that's one of the answers in there just to be evil to confuse you. So now what we can do is we can use that to help us calculate our book value. So remember book value at the end of year four or beginning of year five, right? End of year four is the same as beginning of year five would equal our asset cost of 23,000 minus our accumulated depreciation. Okay, that will equal, equal our book value. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to say depreciation expense. I'll just write it all out here. Depreciation expense year five, which is what the question is asking for, equals our book value at the end of year four or beginning of year five minus our salvage value. And our salvage value was not changed, so it's still 1500 Okay. 
divided by our remaining useful life. Well, we've had four years so far. And so the salvage, so the useful life was changed from eight down to six, more, six years. So the total useful life is six years. We've gone through four years so far. So how many more years do we have? Two. We have two more years of depreciation. Okay. Two more years of useful life because it was revised down from eight down to six. We've already completed four. That means we only have two more years of the useful life. So I take my book value right over here, asset cost minus accumulated depreciation minus my salvage value divided by my remaining useful life. And what that gives us is 5,375A is the right answer. Okay. And the journal entry, of course, here would be debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation for 5,375. And we're assuming here straight line depreciation. So that would be 5,375 in year five and in year six. And then we're down to the salvage value of 1,500. Okay. All right. So let's look at number 69. So number 69 is a tricky problem. So I'm going to set up a table to help me solve this problem, by the way. So I'm going to go period. Okay. And then I'll say uh, beginning book value. So beginning of book value at the beginning of the period. And I'll say times my double DB rate. Okay. Equals my depreciation. And then I'll say end. End of period book value. Okay. So I'm going to do a table to help me solve this because what I want to do at this problem, by the way, is go through all five years of the useful life. This problem is only asking you for depreci for um, the assets book value at the end of year three or beginning of year four, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and do it for the entire uh, useful life, okay? So let's say period one, and come over here, and our book value is equal to our initial cost of $100,000. And then to calculate our double declining rate, Remember, we take 100%, which just means 100% of the asset cost. That's why I'm putting 100%, divided by the useful life. Well, the useful life is 5. That gives us 20%. That's the single line rate. Single line rate. And then to get the double, I multiply it times 2, 40%. 0 0.4. 40%. So that gives us a depreciation expense of $40,000, right? But what I'm going to put here for period one is 10,000. Why do I put 10,000? Look when we put it, look when we started it, October. So it'd be $40,000 for the entire year. Yes. But to get to that 10,000, I went my 40,000 for the entire year times three twelfths because of October, November, December, that gives me 10,000. So then what this gives me, right, is my book value at the end of period one is $90,000. Period two, year two, remember this is years, 90,000 is beginning book value. So remember end of period one becomes beginning period two. Point four is my double rate. That gives me a depreciation expense of $36,000. Then I can take my um, 90,000 minus my 36,000, or I could take 100,000 minus accumulated depreciation, which would be 46,000. And what that gives me is 54,000. Period three, 54,000 right there. Point four, that gives me 21,600. And then my book value, I could take that, that end of period book value minus my depreciation, or I could take 100,000 minus 10,000 minus 36 minus 21, because all these added up is accumulated depreciation. Okay. However you do it, 32,400. That's a four, 32,400. Okay. So then in year four, I have 32,400, and by the way, that is the answer right there.
32,400 at the end of year three. But I'm going to go ahead and continue on and do the whole all the way through the useful life. And by the way, this is a very good problem to study to make sure you know how to do this problem for the test. It's a great problem to make sure you understand for double declining. So 0 0.4, 32,000 times the 0.4 gives us our 12,960. So that means I can take my 32,4 minus my 12,960. I have end of period book value of 19,440. Then period 5, I have 19. 440.4, okay, and what the 19, 440 times 0.4 would give me my 7,776, but I'm not going to put that down for my depreciation expense. My depreciation expense in year five is 4,440. Why is it 4,440 and not 7,776? It's 4,440 because what is the salvage value? 15,000, and I can't go below the salvage value. So when I get down with the double declining, towards the end of the period, I have to take my book value right over here, minus my salvage value to back in to figuring out my depreciation expense. Now, 19,440 minus the 4,440 gives me that $15,000 right there with it, which is the salvage value, and I can't depreciate below the salvage value, remember? Okay. All right, so again, this is a really good problem to make sure you understand. All right, so now what I want you to do is we have some additional problems here on page 231, this one 126, 127, and then you have 128 on 232, and then you have 129 on 233. I want you to pause the lecture video and do these on your own, and then we'll check it together, okay? Thanks so much. Okay, so let's take a look to see how you did. So look over here at 126, this is just straight line. So we just take our asset costs, which is given to us um, at the $87,000 minus the salvage value of $7,000 divided by the useful life of five gives us $16,000 per year. So the right answer is B. $16,000, okay? Look at 127. This is the exact same setup, but it involves double declining. So you can see what I did here is I said year one, $87,000, the asset cost times the double rate. The double rate is 40% because remember, I just took the 100% of the book value divided by the useful life, five, gives me 20% per year. And I multiply it times two, gives me 40%. So that gives me my 34,800, which is my depreciation expense at the end of year one. Then I take my 87,000 minus my depreciation expense, my accumulated depreciation, which is my depreciation expense for one, year one. This is my accumulated depreciation at the end of year one as well, because I've only had one year's worth of depreciation. So this is the book value right here, 87,000 minus my 34.8, that's the book value at the beginning of year two, that's what that is, times my double rate, 20,880. E is the right answer, which is the top here of page 232. We look at number 128 over here on page 232. So we take our 87,000 minus our 7,000 divided by our 400,000, so our asset costs minus our salvage value, divided by our total units gives us 0.2 per unit, so 20 cents of depreciation per unit. 0.2 times the 84.5 gives us our 16,900, so A is the right answer right over there. And then with number 129, that is the exact same as 128 here. It's just asking for the journal entry and it's debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. What you debit, what you credit doesn't change across depreciation methods. It's just the dollar amount that changes because you're calculating depreciation differently for each method, okay? All right, well, I hope you got those right. And so I'm gonna go ahead and end the lecture video now. Thanks so much, bye.